Inspector Leiden, uh, tell me more about your camp. This is the summertime, and um, let us know about your camp and how you got here. Well, this is the Southern Division Summer Youth Program, and um, we come at the Ministry of National Security and the Royal Bahamas Police Force. The camp is situated at the Stephen Dilley Primary School, and today uh, we were given an invitation by Mr. Nyga to come down and to enjoy the key and to bring the kids down, and we took that opportunity. We brought the kids down, and um, they sure had a good time today. So we want to say thank you to Mr. Nyga for inviting the Southern Division to come down to Nygaard Key today. Tell me about how many kids you brought and the activities they were uh, a part of today. Certainly, we brought a total of about 159 campers today. We took everybody from the camp today and we brought them down to the key and um, they enjoyed themselves. They engaged in volleyball and basketball, swimming, they went to the slides, they had a great time and oh, they enjoyed the food as well. Yeah, and um, what do you think they have to say about this place? I think if you ask them individually, they'll tell you they're dying to come back. As a matter of fact, they said to me, Ms. Leiden, why didn't you tell us about this before? We could have come here last year. And so I said, each year we try to expose the kids to a different um, site. And so this year, we decided to take the opportunity to come down after Mr. Nygaard invited us. And our main aim is to positively engage the young persons. We want to keep them off the street during the summer activities and to avoid them getting into any criminal activities. And so we're glad and we're delighted to be here with Mr. Nygaard today. I want to welcome all you kids over here to Nygaard Key. We've had Nygaard Key here now for over 30 years. I built, started 30 years ago building this place. It's been a vin, sort of a welcoming part of my life. Every time I come over here, I've been able to create this beautiful place. Why I wanted to invite you particularly over here, and we've been doing this over many, many times now, is I wanted you kids to also see what is possible within our lifetime. I started personally from exactly the same position as you have been coming from the inner cities, except I was even poorer. I started from a converted coal bin, running in 40 below weather, with no running water, no electricity, no indoor plumbing, 
and it was mighty cold up there in Winnipeg for 40 below. And we crawled out of that hole and climbed up and became and started working very, very hard in our life as a group, as a family, loving and respecting our parents, loving and respecting our parents. And all of a sudden, I'm finding myself in the most beautiful place in the world. So it is possible. It is very possible. I'm testimonial to that. I gave you all a little picture, or most of you got a picture of Nygaard Key. I also gave you a picture of my before and after pictures about my health. And also a speech that I made when I was 26 years old, when they asked me to speak to a graduating class about the word success. I want you all to read that speech. I want you all to read that speech at least twice a month. It is a very, very powerful speech. It's a very powerful speech because the words contained in it are the reason that I enjoyed this tremendous success. So please make sure that you read it very, very carefully. It is a required reading by our company. Other thing I want to tell you about is your own freedom. You people have freedom. I didn't have freedom when I moved from Finland and I moved into Canada to have freedom. I moved over here to have freedom. You do have your freedom. And please treasure that freedom. What I want to expose to you was the fact that this kind of place is enjoyed and to be enjoyed by you and can be enjoyed by you. But you particularly have a beach of your own that's perhaps even more beautiful than this. It's over there. That beach all on that side, Clifton, that's your beach. You people own it. You people have it. Don't ever let it go. That's your beach. A lot of people over here, including Mr. Wiley, has been fighting very, very hard to have you be able to enjoy that piece of property over there, which is one of the finest beaches in the world. And that is yours. And I want you to make sure that you make a point of going to that beach at least once a week, maybe every Sunday, and enjoy the beautiful benefits of that beach. It is your beach, it's a Bahamian people's beach, you know, and I'm here to try to help you to enjoy that. Because some of the people here in this community don't want you to have it. My neighbor doesn't want you to have it. I want you to have it. It is yours, and I would love to see you guys have every party there every Sunday. In fact, I'm gonna make a donation today to your people over here for the purpose of you being able to enjoy that beach every Sunday and a regular, regularized event over here. And I want to have it bigger and bigger and bigger. We enjoy this place over here every Sunday, with a lot of group of us. And, uh, and then I would just love to see you have a whole your event there every Sunday and take a busload of people and start supporting it. Just remember, it's your beach. Just remember that I'm here to help you enjoy that beach. Just remember this man over here is doing a hell of a lot of work over there from get-go, Mr. Wiley, and in that whole plantation. There's a slave plantation over there. There's a slave plantation over there that set all of the slaves that came through that hole, set them free. And that's the reason you guys are here free, is because of that space. So please go and enjoy it, please go and see it, please go and see your roots over there. That is a very, very special place over there. I turn into the health issue. You've got pictures of me before, I, at, at 69 years old. I particularly want to emphasize this, that there's some very, very special things to be said about this. As you may know, I've been a world leader in stem cells, about in health, in good health. I, that good health can't start early enough. Your particular issue is that if you study this and you can see the picture of me when I was 69 years old, you can see the picture of me now that I'm 74 years old, and you can see that I got younger. You can see my muscles are growing bigger. See that? Muscles, right? This program that I'm on works. Bahamians have very bad habits. I don't want you guys to have those very bad habits. I want you to learn to eat properly. I want you to enjoy yourself. Now if you notice on that picture, the first issue is about health. It's about food. Be careful about what you eat. 
Do not eat yourself to your sickness. It is a very big epidemic in this country. Now you can't start this message all early enough. So I'm here to try to leave you a message here of good health and to take care of yourself. Now, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the best medicine in the world is exercise. Exercise. That is the best medicine. You stay in sports. Keep staying in sports all your life. We have volleyball. We have basketball. We, are, we have weightlifting. Yeah, I entertain all of the athletes of the country. Exercise, exercise is your best avenue. So get into sports. Do your sports. Keep doing your sports as long as you can. I still do sports. I'm so proud to be playing with the Bahamian national team. They're over here. Volleyball every night over here. You know. So <clears throat> now. One more message then, and the last message is that we got, we got a speech there that I delivered when I was 26 years old. In that speech is issues called a proper attitude, proper commitment to your goals, and then you work hard at it. So if you re read those kind of speeches every single day, you can and be able to achieve all this. So. Please, everybody, thank you very much for coming. I appreciate this, having you over here. We do this annually with different groups of people, and we're going to start doing that, I'm promoting the whole program for Clifton in, uh, from here on in. And then I'm going to donate the check to you. So you can do two ways. And what is this part? This is over you. Summer, you can. summer camp here, and then the police force over here, you know, for having and for being able to continue on with these programs and particularly continue on having a program over there. And I support it every which way. Thank you very much for coming. I appreciate having you over here. My God, Keith. Thank you very much. The Z Bandits, John Canoe and Community Organization, 10th Annual Summer Youth Camp. This is our second day into camping. And we want to thank the Almighty Lord Jesus Christ and Secondly, Mr. Nygaard, for having our camp and the children to come out here at Nygaard Key to enjoy a splendid day here. The kids had a great time. They enjoy everything, all of the activities, basketball, volleyball. They had even a 100-yard dash. They enjoyed a wonderful beach. They were all about into that Bunkson Castle over there. It was truly a great, great day for the children of Centerville and Angliston who came out here to enjoy this camp. And Mr. Nygaard, we, we normally, I must say to you, that we normally do four field trips in the whole duration of our six week, six weeks summer youth camp. And I can tell you, sir, that our next field trip would be right at Clifton, yeah. where we're gonna bring some 200 to 300 kids, and we're gonna camp and have a wonderful time out there. Matter of fact, it might be our favorite home other than the Nygaard Key. So we want to thank Mr. Nygaard once again on behalf of Z-Bandits Summer Youth Educational Outreach Camp. So we thank you very much for this wonderful day we had here. Thank you, thank you, and thank you, Mr. Nygaard. Mr. Nygaard, I'd like to say on behalf of the Commissioner of Police, Mr. Ellison Greenslade, and the Senior Executive Leadership Team, sir, I want to say a heartfelt thank you to you for choosing the Southern Division Summer Youth Program today sir thank you we had a great time I can tell you the kids they said to me Ms. Needham why didn't you tell us about this before and they're eager to come back again so sir we say thank you and we're eager to come back whenever you're welcome to having us back again so thank you so much All right. All right, Mr. Nygaard I'm sure you've um been hearing about what's happening in the country as it stands right now and um, the people as well as the government they're very concerned with um, the big development that's happening on Cable Beach and um, and we would also you know like to know because I think last time you said something about it but where it stands right now how do you see what's happening from your perspective it's very unfortunate uh, the Bahamara I think I, I Personally, think it's, it was ill-planned in the first place, and and uh, and uh, was almost uh, doomed to have some these kind of problems. Uh, <coughs> uh, however, I think the prime minister has been doing an excellent job in trying to mitigate it and try to put it on stream. You know, uh, it's a case of uh, of not having enough proper financing and not having proper arrangements in there, and and really causing uh, this 
functional operation for everybody, including the Bahamian people. It's really sad to see so many people really not lose their jobs now and, and be in an indecisive point, uh, you know, and, uh, and, uh, and I do hope that, uh, that the, the owners themselves get it sorted out. You know, the, the owners themselves really had the responsibility to put this thing together. They're, they're, they're the ones who put the whole package together, and um, for them not to kick in their share of the dollars now, you know, I think is, is very ill-placed by them, you know. And uh, I, I, I would really love to see this blame game stop being on the Prime Minister. <laughs> Prime Minister has been trying to really accommodate them all he can, you know, and for the people who put the project together and who got so many concessions from the government to step up and put their money in and, uh, and finish doing this project. Is the Prime Minister right then to really reach out again, like the previous administration, to help these persons who have really lost income due to the um, Bahama situation? Yeah. It's a very ticklish situation for the Prime Minister, you know. And first of all, country really doesn't have any money in itself, so it just can't go around, you know, spending money that it doesn't have. And, uh, and, and second of all, it's already done so much for these developers, you know, both governments for that matter. And, uh, and I, I think the real onus here, real onus here is to help the people who are getting the benefit of this whole project, benefit of this land, etc., to step up and put the rest of the money in there and make the thing happen. For them to declare bankruptcy right now is, is really very cowardly thing, it's my opinion. You know, I, I, think, I don't think it's the right thing for Bahamas and the right thing for this project and the right thing for Bahamian people. What do you say then to um we understood, according to the Prime Minister, that he was blindsided as well as um, the Chinese persons with the construction where um, his Marillion, he just went ahead into the United States and, um, you know, filed for bankruptcy and um, without letting this government know. And then he came back to the Bahamas just yesterday and tried to file bankruptcy for here without, you know, even letting the government know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's a... That's an end run, you know, and it's very unfair, you know, and a sneaky thing to do. So, yes, uh, yes, the prime minister was blindsided on it, you know, and he, I think he negotiated in good faith and uh, and uh, and did the thing the prime ministers in that position ought to have done, and uh, and 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 was very optimistic in terms of uh, bringing the re people together, and for them to do that. Uh, it speaks for itself. It, it, it was it was not a right thing to do, and it's not a right thing to do right now. You know, this is bigger than just a money-making issue. This is this is Bahamian economy at stake here. You know, this is a Bahamian future at stake here. This is thousands and thousands of Bahamian jobs at stake here. You know, and and I think the the, the developers themselves have to feel a certain amount of responsibility toward, towards that. You know, they surely paraded around and and uh, went ahead and uh, and and represented this to be a project like that. You know, and uh, and convinced the government to to uh, to give them lots and lots of concessions here. You know, so they end up in this kind of position. You know, it's it's tragic, you know, and I think the developers themselves are very wrong. Where's your optimism as it relates to Nagaki? Well, you know, we have we have problems here ourselves. Uh, we've been blocked down from being able to develop Nagaki, Key, putting injunctions against us, uh, irresponsible injunctions, and uh, and uh, it's uh, it's uh, uh, part of the campaign to try to make this government fail, you know. And uh, it's part of a political campaign already to try to try to to cause and make this prime minister look bad, you know, so the next election could be won by somebody else. You know, there's no reason for this project to be sitting for five years without being approved. You know, this place was burned down five years ago, and the application was made to rebuild it five years ago. And for still still to be sitting in this kind of position because it's been blocked off by my neighbor here. It's it's really tragic. It's it's a bit of a bit of a bit of a black eye for the judicial system in itself, Bahamian judicial system, and the whole world is seeing that. You know, so it's it's not not good at all to have a situation like this go on. You know, in the eyes of anybody. Yeah.